Our first inductee this evening, as a ski teacher, has influenced literally tens of millions of new skiers in his career, revolutionizing the art of ski teaching. Let's look now at the life of Horst Abraham. There is no right or wrong way to ski. However, there is an efficient and inefficient way to ski, wrote Horst Abraham. Originally from Austria, Abraham created the groundbreaking American Teaching Method, or ATM, which, with its guest-focused methodology, was, and still is, considered to be one of the biggest game changers for ski instruction throughout the world. Abraham began to form his theories during his early days as an instructor for the Austrian Ski School in Kitzbühel and St. Anton, gaining the Austrian Ski and Alpine Guide certification in 1959. One week in Kitzbühel, Horst was teaching a group of American beginner students. They kept asking him why they were always doing exercises across the hill and never down it. The following day, Horst recognized one of his beginners on an intermediate run and scolded him for being there. The student laughed and skied away, making basic parallel turns. It was then that Abraham realized the absurdity of the lockstep mechanical progression. The next day, he was fired for neglecting to remain within the prescribed progression. Arriving in Aspen in 1964, Horst found that American ski areas were also teaching the Austrian one-size-fits-all approach. But unlike Kitzbühel, here he found supervisors and fellow instructors willing to listen to his ideas. Thanks to the mentoring of Kurt Chase and Jerry Muth, Abraham began to gain national visibility and influence. He was asked to become the technical director at Vail, and here his holistic and guest-centered teaching philosophy began to catch on private and group ski lessons became more popular. He was appointed to serve as the technical vice president of the Rocky Mountain Ski Instructors Association. Next, Abraham was asked to fill the position of director of training and development for the Professional Ski Instructors of America, or PSIA, in 1971. Now with a national platform, Horst was able to present his ideas, not only to American ski centers, but to the international ski community as well, through the Interski Forum, first in 1976 in Italy, and again in 1980 in Japan. The American teaching methodology marked a clear global shift from a teaching technique to a student-centered process. Fewer beginner skiers dropped out, thanks to Abraham, as American ski instructors now focused on customer needs, gender and age differences, learning styles, and personalized performance management. American ski schools thrived as hundreds of thousands of improving skiers came back for more. Then in 1983, Horst offered Skiing Right, the official instructional book of the PSIA. It's fair to say that Horst Abraham's work was a true labor of love. And with his passion, intelligence, and leadership, he opened up the pleasure of skiing and improving one's skiing to a whole new generation and for generations to come. These days, Horst continues to provide regular articles to Ski and Skiing Magazine, PSIA's 32 Degrees Magazine, and is currently putting the finishing touches on a new book entitled Coaching Right. A recipient of the PSIA Educational Excellence Award, Horst was inducted into the Colorado Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame in 2010. And so tonight, for his lifetime achievements on snow, we now welcome Horst Abraham into the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame and present him with our sport's highest award, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame Medal of Honor. And please welcome this game changer, a visionary instructor, Horst Abraham, instruct, escorted to the stage by Hall of Fame executive board member from Marquette, Michigan, and also a fellow PSI member, Tom Anderson.
Horst Abraham, having been elected by the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association and representation of the 15 million skiers and snowboarders in America, we hereby bestow upon you this Medal of Honor in Vail, Colorado, and confer upon you from this day forward, April 13, 2013, induction into the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame in Ishpeme, Michigan, where your accomplishments will forever be remembered. The medal is being placed by Dave Holly, longtime chairman for the Hall of Fame Board of Directors and a native of Ishpeming, Michigan. Oh my God. <laughs> it, it is such a an awesome feeling to be in this room with you, fellow skiers, fellow instructors, fellow members of the ski community, and be in the same room and perhaps later on on the stage with medal winners. I mean, this is just awesome. I'm just an instructor. But somehow, people along the way made my journey very special. And I would like to ask you to indulge me to just mention a few of the names that were so influential upon my career, my passion, and in the direction in which I directed exactly that. And I really would like to first and foremost um, call upon Mr. Kurt Chase, my first boss, the found, one of the founders of the Professional Ski Instructors of America, and my boss in Aspen, who was a taskmaster, a fair, but very persistent taskmaster who kept us on the very highest professional level. Kurt, I salute you with all my heart and respect. Please give a hand to Mr. Kurt Chase. And I'm saying that because much of what is bestowed upon me in this award really was born under his umbrella. And I just can't thank you enough of what you did for us. I also would like to acknowledge, of course, my sponsor here, who had to tell blatant lies about my accomplishments to get me on this list and on the stage here. Thank you, Carl Peterson, and of course I'm joking, but thank you so much for your <laughs> persistence. <coughs> Allow me to also mention some other very, very special people. And we all need in our life what I like to call a crap detector, a person who has your best interest in mind and never hesitates to say bullshit. <laughs> and that, for me, is Weems Westfeld, the uh, ski school director of uh, Aspen Highlands, and he sits right here. Here's for you. My best crap detector. <laughs> I also would like to call upon uh, Doc Pfeiffer. I saw you last back here. Thank you so much for your support. Um, what can I say? I so admired your writing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Joan Heaton, very influential in creating our American teaching system. Um, thank you for your wisdom and for the injection of your research uh, that really made AT ATM what it is. I also would like to call upon a motley group of people back there who are the best and brightest uh, skiers that we were able to gather when we formed uh, the U.S. demonstration team. Could I ask uh, these gentlemen to please stand? They are the best and brightest. They were really the ones that uh, made the international impact happen. Please, can we see you? Yes. Paul Jones, Victor Gurdon, <coughs> Jens Husted, John Bowles, and of course our very own, whom we don't even need to introduce. Very, very special people. Um, I, let me also focus then on my family because, um, as you know, when you work in, in the ski industry, you don't necessarily make a lot of money. Um, <coughs> my son Alex here, he turned into being a, a consummate professional despite my parenting. And my dear wife, the love of my life, Kit, who was probably the best cook of stone soup. <laughs> I, 
love you dearly, Kit, and you were an integral part of my life. So I have no medals to present. I have no big leaps and, and pictures of it sh uh, to show you. But somehow, our guests, the paying guests out there, hopefully are better for all the work that we collectively have produced. And again, I salute you, thank you, and thank you also for um, helping me celebrate this very, very special moment. Thank you so much.